Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and today we're going to be installing new entry door locks on our brand new RV. Our brand new RV. Why would I be changing them on a brand new RV when there's nothing wrong with the old ones? Well, because these are keyless <laughs> and I'm getting lazy and I like lazy. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. see we have a traditional style door lock here um, typical this one activates the deadbolt and then this key here uh, lock I should say will make it to where the handle doesn't open but as you can guess getting in and out um, you got one key that does these two locks but from the manufacturer I'm not sure why but that you have a separate key for the one on the back door and of course we have two doors so that means I've got to have uh, you know basically two separate keys and fumbling around with them at night hmm, you know there's a way around that I've mentioned that in previous videos but it still would be a lot easier if we just had a keyless entry and uh, maybe a keypad so let's look at what we've got these were locks that were sent to us by RV lock for us to review try out and tell everybody what we thought and of course if I'm talking about them they must be okay <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into these things and see what it's going to take to install them and if I run into any problems and how easy it is So right out of the box uh, a couple of course we have two and you do have to know right hand or left hand our doors are right hand doors and uh, then there is a separate remote control that's what this is a, a keyless remote and that's kind of nice they got me a hat I get to wear a hat for this one opening the box uh, we have a key number that's going to come in handy Looks like they're giving you some sort of a discount card. Here's the key fob uh, that will open the lock, obviously. And don't worry if, if there's a problem where the battery, you know, there's some kind of an issue there, you know, some kind of a power issue. Uh, there's still, you know, keys that will open this. You get some new hardware that's included in case you need it. And then we're going to get into the packaging. And then you have the lock itself. And like I said, there's some keys just in case, you know, if you get... Uh, to where there's a power issue you can still get in it has the traditional style keyed entry what's really nice is this actually looks better than the keyed entry that we currently have that's for sure now they make quite an assortment of locks you know standard locks and then they offer all these keyless locks and you're going to be potentially needing you know a different design for your rv so basically what it's showing you here is the instructions which i'm going to show the installation and then uh, how to program your keypad and then how to program your key fob and in this case a remote let's go ahead and open this remote take a look at it oh it's kind of nice they give you a, a place to mount it and then the uh, remote itself nice that's that's really nice uh, basically what this is is if you're inside your RV maybe you put this by your bed and uh, you know get ready to go sleep for the night and it's like did you lock the door no did you grab the remote and push the button or maybe uh, you know you want to put it in the bathroom in case somebody comes and the doors are locked and they can't get in uh, I, I think the bedrooms best for us though so we'll go ahead and just clip these keys off here so they're uh, not in the way and as far as the uh, keys and what they do now they give you two keys with each one of these uh, door handles uh, but one's an extra key. It's just one key that opens both locks. It's kind of nice I don't know if you can get this in the sunlight, but it's actually marked uh, where they don't even do that from the factory So sometimes you can't tell now this way you can uh, and this won't allow the latch to actually move And then the bottom one this is for the deadbolt and this will lock the deadbolt problem is with the deadbolt You can you can have it in the up position and maybe the deadbolts activated. Maybe it's not activated uh, It's kind of nice that again that mark will help you out knowing which way you're turning it and when the deadbolt is activated um, that's essentially what all this does too so what are we looking at here uh, basically the same setup it looks exactly the same as what the uh, factory one does you know it's it's got a plate for inside and then you have your outside plate so let's see what this looks like whenever we line this up uh, on our door, but first we got to get the old one off. So let's move over there and see what that looks like uh, What we've got in our case is one of these friction hinges that wherever you place the door it stops uh, Whenever you're working on your door, you need to make sure it's not blowing around if the wind is going to kick up um, 
open your door, secure it. You're going to move your screen out of the way. And now you have access to basically everything you need to remove your factory door lock. Uh, it's just these four screws. Typical door. I've seen this on my 1992 Terry camper. Uh, it's the same on this one. And, and this is a 2020 model. So they've been using essentially the same latches for a long time. We're going to remove these four screws and we're also going to remove these two screws that are on the end here. You need to keep an eye out if your plate has a, a thinner uh, side and a thicker side as far as the opening if it's off center. Just take a general survey of what it looks like. Maybe take a picture of it with your phone. That way when you're putting it back together if there's any questions you can go back to your, your picture and know for sure. So these two screws out and these four screws and uh, at that point everything should come apart. All right, with those four screws removed, you can see this plate just comes off here. All right, on this side then, you know, it just pushes out and you get to kind of, kind of wiggle it a little bit. And there's a piece there that actually fell down in. So just so you guys know, uh, this is what it is. This is the shim that was inside and it had fallen down inside the door. Just get a magnet uh, on a stick, put a coat hanger on it and just kind of feed it down there and it'll come back out. Uh, not a big deal, but I wanted to get it back out just to show you guys what it was. Now, a lot of you guys may wonder how this works. Well, it's not magic. Uh, there's just uh, batteries in it. And the batteries can be accessible from the inside, so it's not a big deal to change them. You can see they're four AA batteries, and yes, the batteries come with the unit. So you're going to have four AA's, and they're um, alkaline. You can see a good brand name. And I suggest you do the same. Definitely make sure that you run decent alkaline batteries in there so they last a period of time. And again, it's just a couple of small Phillips screws that hold it in place uh, as far as the cover. And uh, yeah, not magic, batteries. Now there's been a lot of talk about these, uh, at least on the RV uh, you know, realm on YouTube, about the openings on your door. You know, you have this kind of a lock initially and it could be that they've cut the opening kind of big um, but you, you can see that essentially it's the same layout it's just their outside handle it's a little bit more fancy <laughs> to accommodate that keypad uh, so the opening is the main concern and it's sealing off uh, against the door without any gaps they do address that issue if you do have that problem there is a rubber gasket it's already on here but they have another decal uh, gasket that applies you know you just clean up the area and uh, secure it and it will help take up the gap so that the door doesn't uh, you know bring in any water so uh, let's go ahead and see how this one lines up so since mine came with the shim initially I'm gonna go ahead and reinsert a shim on the new door latch even though it may not need it uh, it's kinda hard to tell and I would rather err in the side of what it already was than after the fact uh, we're just going to use these uh, latches to hold it in place as we feed it through. And then uh, we need to get the wire in place. The wire is going to have to go through to some extent. And this hole is actually, believe it or not, really tight. I mean, there is no way there's a gap with this. <laughs> it's going to fit perfect without any kind of a gasket. So now that I've got this in place, I'm going to move you guys around to the other side so you can see how that goes in. I went ahead and installed one of the screws uh, to hold the mechanism in place for the most part, but you can see it's loose. And you want it to be loose so that you can position the other half of the new latch and still be able to uh, make sure that it's tight enough and that it engages the door enough. And I mean, there's all kinds of things that you've got to screw around with to make sure it's okay. Now in my case, uh, it does look like it's a little deep, um, but I think it might be enough because we have a unique door latch uh, system, a door striker that actually sticks out of the door frame. I'm going to go ahead and put in the other screw in the bottom, you can see here. And again, not tightening it, just, uh, just getting it to snug up a little bit. So now that that one's in place, all we got to do is uh, connect the wires and then align not only the... Uh, the latch itself, which has to be in here to activate this latch, that's what this does, this cog here, but you also have to line up this little half moon piece 
to go over what is the uh, deadbolt activator or actuator I should say so there's a few things you got to watch you you need to make sure the wire goes in there and gets tucked out of the way which there's no interference which is pretty much above you know in this area here and then as far as the uh, screws you need to make sure the holes will line up uh, which they should do on their own but these two pieces here and you know there's a little finagling but it's not difficult you just have to take your time so once you have everything lined up and you've got it basically in position you can see it's a little crooked I'm not worried about that quite yet what I'm gonna do is uh, run the screws in to make sure everything's secure and it will still move don't over tighten anything don't even tighten it right now just get it kind of snug okay so now we've got all the screws just loosely mounted in there what we're gonna do is move this around and position it to where it's centered where everything looks correct don't pay attention to this our screen door requires this latch to be slightly crooked however as far as the lock on the outside that's what we're looking at as far as straight up and down and we can tell if it's positioned correctly if it is then at that point you can tighten all the screws do not over tighten them just tighten them don't go crazy you don't need a lot of force now that we've got it all tightened down one of the things you may want to check is your screen door operation now in our case the screen door contacts this handle because of the design just a little bit but it's not enough it'll move the handle a little bit but you can see it still latches everything still latches and as far as if the screen door is closed and then you close this on it um, it's the same thing everything connects but there is a little bit of a clearance thing going on there you can see just a little bit of a rub and it's not very much nothing to really be concerned about because everything still works um, on yours may be a little bit different you might have to make some provision on your your screen uh, to where you know it will allow this to clear a little better but we're fine with this uh, no problem so now we need to uh, make sure that it works with the keys first and uh, then we'll go ahead and try it out with the uh, power locks we'll go ahead and do the programming okay so the first thing we're going to do is uh, just check the lock operation uh, I, I have to say that these keys even though they're brand new and usually keys start operating a little bit better after they're older uh, they they go on better than the factory ones uh, nothing against the factory but um, they were really tight so we know that works out okay so now for the programming um, I'm not going to be able to show you the inside and the outside at the same time, but there's an on-off switch. It's very clear what it looks like. Uh, you're going to turn that on, and we're going to go through the programming procedure. All right, so whenever you're setting up this as far as programming, you're going to hold the 8 button down, the number 8. You can see 1 through 8. You're going to hold the 8 button down. Then you're going to press the lock button and then quickly release it. Uh, at that point, you'll hear a long, audible beep. That means you're in programming mode. What you'll do then is enter 1, 2, 3, 4, push the lock button and it may lock the mechanism so once it's finished doing that what you'll do is you'll enter your new code whatever your code is four to six digits and then push the lock button you'll enter that same code again and then hit the lock button at that point there'll be a confirmation tone it's kind of a longer beep each time you enter the the code the you know as you're making this learn it there's a short beep but during the final code enter and lock button you'll hear a longer beep then from that point on you're done so whenever you want to open it up you enter your code and then you press lock or unlock and you get that loud confirmation that it's taken care of and the door is now unlocked it's that simple so now we're going to program the key fob since I have two different doors uh, each fob will control two different locks now if you only have one door uh, you could program one side for the door and then if you buy one of their baggage compartment latches that are also keyless wireless however you want to say it um, you could use that for the other side but in our case uh, we're gonna have door number two and door number one or in our case zone number two zone number one because that's how our heating and cooling system is referred to inside the RV and zone two is the bedroom and that's what this door is is the bedroom door so we're gonna make sure we keep it simple for ourselves and know that zone two is the bedroom uh, the same with this remote you've got zone one zone two zone three that would be if you had a baggage lock in addition to a couple of doors or you can just lock and unlock all of them but we're gonna program uh, zone two and zone one separately so let's go ahead and uh, get this programmed it's not a big deal I'm not gonna show you on the inside of the door because you're gonna be able to see it it says clearly on the door fob learn and it's right above the on and off button 
there's a, a physical switch there. That physical switch is going to be moved to the on position and then you're going to push or depress with just a pen or a pencil a little button uh, that says fob learn. You can hear the beep. Now I'm going to push the lock button. Zone 2 remember. And that tells me that it has learned. And you're going to push it one more time to confirm it. And then that's the confirmations. Now if you wanted to erase that code, what you would do is push that same button inside and hold it for 10 seconds. That way if you wanted to do another key fob or you've got something entirely different, that would erase everything you get to start again. Now in this case we want to push it again so we can make this remote uh, teach this door handle to open itself when we push the button. So again the same process. I'm going to push the learn button real quick. You hear that beep and then I'm going to push the zone 2 lock. You can hear that's the confirmation. And then I'm going to push it one more time to make another confirmation. Just so you can see what's going on here whenever I push the button, you're not locking this top one. That top one doesn't lock. You're locking the deadbolt. So number two lock. It, it's already out. Unlock. You can see it opens it. Same with this one. We're going to uh, hit lock. Oh, and unlock. Now as far as your all button, you have to add the locks that you want to be activated by the all button. So just because I programmed zone 2 doesn't mean that this one's programmed. So we're going to do that. Again, we're going to press this button real quick. Then we're going to press the lock button. And then we're going to do it one more time for the confirmation. And you can see it's locked. So now this will unlock. This will lock. This will unlock zone 2. And this will lock zone 2. Again, this is for like setting bedside or in a drawer and you're getting ready to go to bed for the night and you didn't realize that you locked the doors possibly. Um, or if you want to unlock all the doors uh, and make it simple, you just push one button. You could keep this in your tow vehicle if you have a travel trailer or a, a fifth wheel and then know when you get to a restaurant, you just hit the button and it would open all the doors for you. You don't have to worry about it. But you also have a key fob too, so that's up to you. Right, guys so with Heidi's help I went ahead and got the uh, second latch installed and whenever I was playing around with it um, I was now using zone one which is the orange button on the key fob and what I was having a problem with was um, even though I was pushing what I thought was the lock button on the uh, orange zone on the key fob I was actually pushing the unlock button and I didn't understand why it was not engaging the deadbolt and it's because whenever you're working off this orange button You've got to push it closer to the center of the remote um, or the corner edge, the bottom edge, to make sure you're not accidentally engaging the unlock button. So if you've got big hands, big fingers like me, definitely make sure that you make a conscious effort to push the uh, lower part of the lock button for it to work. Now that's only an issue on the orange zone one. Um, I called customer service. I got my phone call answered right away. There was somebody who spoke perfect English and she handled the problem immediately. I was on the phone for a total of maybe five minutes. That's including the wait time. So uh, good customer service. Now as far as the uh, master remote, this is really cool. I like the way it sounds. Of course, I've got it set up to where if I push the uh, zone button, the lock or unlock button in the zones, um, it's going to open that specific door. But when we're laying in bed late at night and we're not sure if we lock the doors, we can just hit the all button and uh, listen to this and then if we want them both to unlock <laughs> kind of cool huh it's amazing what uh, you know, amuses me um, I'm gonna put the link down below uh, click the link it'll take you right to them go ahead and make sure you choose the one that fits your RV make sure you look at uh, you know measurements and uh, you know that's it Amazon will ship it right out to you. And if you have any customer service questions, of course, contact RV Locks. A big shout out to them. This is probably one of the better upgrades that I've done on uh, even my old RV, which had a lot of extensive work done on it. And of course, this new RV and uh, really happy with it. So thank you very much. And I will leave you with this. <laughs> Hope to see you guys out there. Bye.